Hello, I'm Carlos Chauran. And I'm Enrique Chi, and we're the cooler half of making movies. <laughs> we're here at the Folly Theater about to play some music in the lounge. Hi there, everyone. I'm uh, very happy to have you all here tonight for the first of what we hope will be quite a few concerts here uh, live in the lounge. And um, we really want to try to engage people and keep the folly in people's minds. Um, we also want to support all of our local groups. So we've got these wonderful entertainers here tonight. We also want to celebrate the Follies' birthday. It's our 120th birthday on September 23rd. So give a shout out to the Folly, everybody. <laughs> and um, we very much appreciate you being here. These are tough times. We know everybody is going through a lot. So we appreciate your support and the fact that you're here to see these shows. And so without further ado, I'd like to introduce Enrique Chi and Juan Carlos Chiron from uh, Making Movies. Thank you. I'd always heard there's a jazz guitar player from here in Kansas City who was born around here named Pat Metheny. And I read somewhere that he he would warm up before he'd play it, like he was playing like his his son's friend's birthday party, he was just going to do a jazz guitar rendition of Happy Birthday for him. And he was warming up and warming up and warming up. And the some, somebody asked him, well, why are you trying so hard? You're playing Happy Birthday. You're a mm -hmm. you know, world-renowned guitar player. And he said, because it's, it's always an honor to play music for anyone at any setting. So you have to treat it with that respect. And COVID has made that, like I've always thought that was really wonderful advice, but now I feel that in a deeper level. So it's an honor to play music for you all. Rey 
song came on overhead and it has a lyric in there it's like we're holding hands as walls come tumbling down and it was right as Donald Trump started a campaign and was getting people to rally around build a wall it was you know four years ago like we couldn't have even imagined what was, what was gonna <laughs> unfold before our eyes but um, we started playing the song because the, the message is that of, is that, that sometimes the people that desire power maybe I'm the best suited for it. That's like this, and it's it's a 30-year-old song, so it was not written about anybody specific. It just maybe just that that feeling as human beings. It's like, man, can't we do better? I thought we, we should have been able to pull off having better leaders by this point in our lives, but, uh, you know, maybe another 100,000 years, we'll figure it out. Uh, yeah, I hope so. Hope so. All right. This song's called Everybody Wants to Rule the World. Ready? Uh-huh. Should you introduce the drum machine? Oh, yeah, this is... Uh, this is little little Yamaha. So her name is. She's a wonderful multi instrumentalist, and she's playing drums. Two, three,
<laughs> so, for those who have not ever seen this instrument before, this is a mejora nera, and this this little instrument is a Panamanian. It's a Panamanian built instrument. They still only make them by hand there, so it's almost a dying breed of people that, that play these things. And I feel very lucky and proud to get to bring it into the world. Um, not, I think this might be the only tour that Mejor <laughs> No one that's ever been in a tour van uh, or a tour bus and stuff traveling around. But this other instrument is um, a mix of, it's of a Venezuelan instrument. It's like tuned more like a Venezuelan instrument, but it's put on the body of a, me of a Mexican jarana. And it's interesting because they had no connection to each other. The Mejorana and the Jarana, like, uh, thousands of miles apart from one another, these things are being invented, but that's, it's actually um, a, an Arabic word because the, the Moors had brought so much Arabic influence to Spain that a lot of the Spaniards that came over had that influence. So somehow, some indigenous folks were collaborating, indigenous, it probably was a combination of indigenous and slaves, made a Jarana in Mexico and a Mejoranera or Mejorana in Panama, um, not tweeting at each other, <laughs> came up with similar brand ideas, which is kind of amazing. amazing. Yeah, and the folklore, like it's there's so much beauty in it, um, but it it comes from a lot of the beauty comes out of stories that aren't so beautiful. Like these little guitars are little because the Spaniards weren't super kind to the indigenous folks, so they didn't give them the technology to build Spanish guitars. So people, the indigenous folks, figured out how to kind of canoe like construct it you know grab a log and just and just carve it all out because they're like that's beautiful i want to imitate that and and i don't have the tools to do it and i can't afford your prices so <laughs> we'll, do it our, we'll do it ourselves <laughs> and and the rhythms even carry that story too and that's that's something that that juan carlos has, has studied a lot with his mom's mom's dance group uh, Totonilco. And that the, the the stories of the rhythms even is a mix of like this crossing of the slave cultures and the African rhythms were merging with these Spaniard um, influenced folks and indigenous people too and indigenous from people. a different area mm -hmm. and that was becoming the soup that is now called folklore. But your your dance group was dance here, right? We have performed here. We always perform during the Cinco de Mayo, and we uh, yeah perform here. This brings it's nice. It brings back Mary being in here, and then. This is the first time I've played in here as a musician, so it's mm -hmm. nice to have both. Mm -hmm. and I think we have, if I'm not mistaken, we have a, actually a student here. Oh, but I had no idea it was going to be here. It was a surprise, right? How's that going? So, did you, did you perform here? Did you ever get a chance to perform here? When you were, you were little. Yeah, she was. <laughs> okay. With all the schools we come. What's that? Yeah, when all the schools yeah. would come and everything like that. Yeah, so it was a beautiful thing. So, I, I love the folly. It it's, brings back good memories. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're around and still doing this kind of programming. And, and the, the, the thing of the dance group, when I met your mom, so we were at, at the Maddie Road Center, had like an event right up the street, and um, I had performed by myself. We didn't have the band yet. And I met your mom, and she was like, she's like, did you see my kids dance? <laughs> yeah, 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 Maria, and nice to meet you. Yeah, I saw them. They did so good, right? They, yeah, they did. They did really good. Um, that's amazing. So it's like, she's like, you got to meet my sons. They're very talented, very handsome. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then after meeting Juan Carlos, uh, she was somewhat right about some of that. But uh, after meeting Juan Carlos, the, the, yeah, I realized like the, their dance group, they did that to preserve culture. And I think that that's a, the best part. Like, we don't have, uh, we, don't, we don't really have, like, the, I make the same joke again, but this is the tweets or the TikToks of people 500 years ago. But we have their um, emotional imprint in a way that we can preserve, right? So the beauty and the, and the joy and the sadness, we have it in the song forms and the traditions that have been passed down. And that's why I think music is so powerful because it, it reminds us of where we all come from. And where we all come from is this soup of stuff. It's all mixed up. And we've been expressing ourselves like this for thousands and thousands of years. So this song is a song that uses those influences, but we wrote it. I wrote it about the dream of being a musician. It's kind of fun that after writing it, I, I got to live some of the things that I was dreaming of. <laughs> Sounds called Montaña.
song about missing your family, wanting to see them in the holidays. Quiero ver mi familia esta Navidad. Quiero hablar con mi abuelo y la verdad. Porque el frío me atormenta. Si sí, el frío me atormenta. Quiero ver la marea y sentir la humedad. Ver tus ojos marrones otra vez más. Porque el frío me atormenta. Si sí, el frío me atormenta. Cuando éramos chicos, amor era lindo, cadera en su madre. Tú 
Thank you to the Fallout Theater for having us. This is mm. fun. This is the first time we've done this. The first time we've played music set, uh, in front of people since February. Oh, no, wow. January. Wow. January, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. You're able to support, and thank you all for supporting artists by having us perform. Um, if you feel inclined to tip, they, they recommended that I tell you that we have a Venmo. And <laughs> it's like at Making Movies. Um, but, but yeah, we're great, grateful for all of the above. And we do want to say, stay tuned. So we, we're putting together what would have been a physical festival at the Crossroads. Um, it would have been the first ever Americana Fest. But we're still doing a virtual version of the festival, and it's still a fundraiser to support our, our youth programs under the, our not-for-profit Artist Mentorship. Um, and so there'll be some special ways that you can participate in it. We're doing like a food partnership for those, but it's really like a virtual TV show event, but features amazing artists. I can't say all of them, but, uh -huh. but, um, but we've been traveling to Memphis to shoot some video with some just really talented uh, musicians and, and kind of helping tell the story of American music, maybe the stories that we feel had been left out a little bit out on the margins. And that's the premise of the, what the concert would have been about. But now we're going to be dedicating our time to telling the story. Right. Um, so it's going to be really fun. Stay tuned for that. And I don't think I have any other announcements. Any further announcements? For any other? Oh, I do have one thing. I do have one thing. So when you become a musician, nobody tells you that you really have to be pretty good at voiceovers. <laughs> Everybody's saying, um, can you guys say, hi, hi, we are making movies. We are <laughs> making movies. And you're listening to 90.3, the whatever. <laughs> All right, let's try. Hi, we are making, making movies. movies. I'm one per. Ah. Okay, thanks. Hi, we, we are, are making movies. Huh? We are making movies, and we're and we're here. And we're listening to 90.3. So the folly had me do this, and uh, <laughs> and so I do have a question for you. And this is this is just us for constructive criticism because we don't have uh, voice coaches right now or anything. But would you say? Uh, <clears throat> And we're going to be live at the Folly Theater at the lounge. Would you lounge? <laughs> or at the lounge. We're in the lounge. What, what are you all recommend? Up, yeah. up, down? Up, down. Hi, my name is Enrique. I'm Juan Carlos. We're here at the Folly Theater, and we're in the lounge. <laughs> <laughs> 
Nailed it. All right, nailed it. We got it. Wow. That's the one. That's the one. That's the one. Got it. Done. All right, this song's called Delilah. We need Yamaha back in the oh, band. Yeah. That's easy. Yeah. We didn't write this song. Our friend, Ruben Blades, wrote it with Lou Reed in the 1987 or something like that. And uh, he he passed it to us. We were working on a collaborative album with Ruben and said, maybe y'all could do something with this song. I wrote it with Lou Reed 30 years ago and haven't found a home for it. And it seems to fit what you're talking about. So it's on our album, I'm Eddie Fan. And we appreciate you all supporting supporting this. Hey man, we did it. We didn't see what happened. Oh yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and we'll keep practicing. And, uh, but thank you all B, for being so respectful too and, stay, and staying safe. Uh, keep each other safe. Take care of one another. I, I mean, because of doing the work that, that we do with the, with the youth, I've had some interactions with some art therapists and, and folks that are actually doing the really heavy lifting right now, like psychologists and stuff like that, because we keep them in touch with the org. And they're saying that it is, it's, it, it's a bit of a crisis with young people right now. So um, take care of your people and call on the young folks in your life and check in on them, because uh, I think there's a lot going on. But thank you again, Folly Theater. Thank you all so much for being here. Yes, thank you. Thank you.